Hey, Crazy Will here today. Today we'll be talking about the Elegoo Mars, a 3D printer, resin printer. Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer. All right, disclosure, this is my first 3D printer. And I actually did print all this stuff right here and some of it I started painting. And like Alice is probably the biggest you could make. She is a work in progress, so do not judge my painting job, but that's the size you could go with the Elegoo Mars. Now, I've been looking at 3D printers for probably about four years now. I've been wanting to get one. It's just what stopped me was the price and the quality. I was just like, eh. Now my buddy Paul told me about the Elegoo Mars. And now I take what he says very seriously because he's actually in the industry. He actually works on million dollar 3D printers or half a million dollar 3D printers. So he's got to know his stuff, correct? Boy, did he ever. Well, even after he told me I didn't want to buy it because I knew I'd spend a lot of time playing with it, learning how to use it, and I feel it would cut into my YouTube time, which since I've got it, it has. But lo and behold, my wonderful wife got me one for Christmas and she thought this would be great for your YouTube channel, which she's correct, but it also is kind of cutting into my video making time as well. Now there's several 3D printers out there, but the concern Consumer brands are usually extruders, which basically it's like a hot glue gun hooked to a computer and it zigzags and maybe I'll find a picture of it and I'll put it right here. And there's these new versions of resin printers coming out and I think they've been out quite a few years. So basically what a resin printer is, there's an LCD screen right down at the bottom here. And you have this vat, which has, it's a tub basically, it's a little vat tub, and it's got a see-through, which is kind of getting dirty, a see-through bottom that will shoot UV light through an LCD screen that will shoot patterns onto the resin. This piece right here comes down and makes it about a millimeter thick where the actual resin is stored. It cures and then attaches itself to the printer bed here. I know it sounds a little complicated. I'm gonna show you how it works in the video. Now, the greatest thing about this printer is it has a touch screen and it has a USB port in the back so that way we can upload the files and actually control everything right on the printer. We don't need a computer to really do anything except the slicing software, which I'm gonna get into that. So the LCD print volume is actually, so you got a pretty decent print volume area. I've been playing with this a little over three months and I've done about 48 prints. Not all of them are here. So here's a quick montage of what I printed so far. basically what you can make with the Elegoo Mars, which is pretty damn impressive. The quality is really smooth and really nice. Opposed to an FDM printer or an extruder printer, which the quality looks like this, which isn't bad. It's just not as smooth as the Elegoo Mars. 
So this printer comes with free software, which we're gonna check out right now. It's called Chitbox, or Chipbox. I don't, I'm saying it wrong probably. You're gonna leave a stupid comment down below. Go right ahead. That's the way I pronounce it. Let's look at it, shall we? Okay, so the first piece of software we're gonna need is Chipbox. Now, it is on your USB stick that comes in the package, and you could download it from there, or you could just go here and download it and get the software, and I'll leave the link down in the description below, but this is the free software that comes with your printer. The next place you wanna head over to after you download and install Chitubox, however you say it, we wanna go to myminifactory.com. This is a place where we can explore different types of 3D models that we can download. You can buy models here, but a lot of them are free, like all of these right here. Now today, I promised my nephew that I would make him a Deadpool, so that's what we're gonna work on today, and I'm gonna download this Deadpool right here, made by this gentleman right here. I'm gonna download that. All right, so we downloaded the file, the zip file. We're gonna grab this file right here, and we're gonna unzip it. And this is the actual model. I'm hitting spacebar on the Mac to show you a quick preview, but let's just open this up in Chitubox. This is what you're gonna see in Chitobox. I'll do a quick tutorial. You can pan by clicking and dragging. Okay guys, I'm editing this and I'm realizing it's really long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the software part out of this video so that way we can make this a little shorter for the people that just want the review part of the Elegoo Mars. And what I'll do is next week, I will actually have the software for those people that actually want to know how to use the software on the Elegoo Mars. And that way it shortens down this video a little bit. And I'm sorry, I was right in the middle of editing it and I just was like, this is too much. Too much, too much. And the print time is gonna be six hours and 55 minutes and 31 seconds. It looks pretty good, we're gonna save it. I just like to call them ready and I'm gonna put it in that same folder. I'm gonna save that. It does take a little time to compile this file. All right, so now that we got them all sliced up and ready to go, let's go over to the file. I have it in downloads, we'll open that up right there. We'll go to the bust file and we want the file that Deadpool bust ready. We're gonna put our USB stick that came with the printer into the actual Computer, when that pops up, it should say no name. I don't know why I didn't change it to Elegoo Mars, but I didn't. And we're gonna click and drag this file over. All right, and then we'll just eject the USB drive and we'll go over to the printer now. Right, so here we are at the printer. I actually built my own box with exhaust fan because resin is kind of stinky and it's actually not good for your lungs and it's not good for you to be breathing in. So I am gonna be wearing a mask during this. When the cover's on, you really don't smell it that bad, but I still am a little cautious. That's why I did this whole box with an exhaust fan kind of thing. And I will show you a picture of that right here of what setup I did and it's a little extreme but you know you can never be too safe so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the USB stick and we're gonna stick it right in the back of the Elegoo Mars right here and then we'll turn on the Elegoo Mars and I'm gonna spin it back around I don't like that it's in the back but that's kind of what it does which doesn't really matter for me because I actually went to the next level and set up a Raspberry Pi to transfer my files to but for demonstration purposes for you guys if you do get this printer and you get it brand new I wanted to show you what the process is when you first get it. Here's the menu. We're gonna be setting up a print. So we're gonna take the top off of this bad boy. We're gonna take the Allen key that was provided for you and we're gonna loosen up the front bolt here, the front screw, and the side screw. And you'll see that it becomes wiggly. That's what we want. We're gonna take these screws right here. We're gonna unscrew them. And we're gonna lift up on this vat a little bit and go over it, because I don't wanna scratch my LCD screen. And we're gonna take this vat and I printed, I 3D printed a little holder that's on Thingiverse. And I just put it right there so that way it's not touching. But the first thing we want to do is level the bed. I take the actual manual that came with it and I use this to level my bed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into tools and we're gonna first, I like to do exposure just to check the actual exposure of the LCD screen. It'll do a little uh, preview print. And that's what it looks like when it's doing the preview print. I'm gonna hit stop to that. So that's the first thing. We just wanna make sure the LCD screen is working correctly. We're gonna click on manual and we're we're gonna level the bed. It's this little bed leveling button right here. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna take our piece of paper while it's going down. You can see that it's moving and we're gonna put it right on top of the LCD screen. 
And at this point, you can adjust it. I'm just adjusting it a little bit because it looks a little crooked. And we're gonna take that Allen key again, and we're gonna tighten down on the actual front screw a little bit. I like to do a little bit on the front screw, and then a little bit on the back screw right here. We'll wrench down on that. And now we're gonna go back over them again, and we're gonna make them really tight. Try to make them not too tight, but tight enough that this isn't gonna move during the print because we don't wanna go through the process of a crooked print. Now what we're gonna do is in the menu, like so, we're gonna just hit the up arrow and we'll take that out. And I hit the up arrow quite a few times, probably about four or five times, so that way it's out of my way when I go to put the vat in. The biggest thing with this printer is you're gonna go through a lot of paper towels. Like so, we're gonna take this, and I always do this, even though this is super clean right now, I always do this before a print. I feel like it puts a little bit of a layer on this filter that makes it so it won't stick because in the past I've had models stick to this actual plate so I'm gonna do regular old Windex glass cleaner spray it wipe it down spray the other side wipe that down get that all nice something to know over time this is it gets pretty crappy looking, as you can kind of see. They get marks and everything. This is still printing good. I did about 48 prints on this. This is gonna be 49. I haven't had to replace it yet, but they are pretty inexpensive. They're around $5 a piece, and you can replace them. So, so far, I think you could probably get, hopefully, 50 to 60 prints out of this before you have to replace it. I haven't had to replace it yet, but I'll let you know when I do. So we're gonna take this, and we're gonna slide it right in here, and you wanna try to keep it up so that way it's not hitting the LCD screen. And it has a little spot that it kind of holds. And then these two screws that are right up here, we're gonna screw them down. Make them nice and tight, that's done. Now we're gonna go into the LCD screen and we're gonna hit the back arrow, which is right here. Click on that, click back again. All right, so now we're gonna go to print. I'm gonna look for our file. There's Deadpool right there. So I'm gonna print that, but not yet, because I gotta put the resin in. Paging Dr. Herman. Dr. Pee Wee Herman. Okay, so you need eye protection, which I already have, and you need a mask. This actually came with two masks. And then we need resin, and that's why I'm wearing the mask. It's not good to breathe in. This is how it comes packaged. I got these for, for Christmas. Give you guys an idea. Get out of that. We're gonna mix it. Shake it up a little bit. No comments. We gotta get gloves on now. You don't wanna touch this stuff without gloves. Make sure they're nitro gloves, that's what you need. All right, so it comes with a measuring cup. All right, I like to do double just to be safe. Good to go. We're gonna pour it into the printer. That's poured into the printer. Now the next thing we do is we just hit play. Unfortunately, you were watching a failed print. What happened is this was not leveled and make sure you put lid on printer and you take a little level and you level it this way and you level it this way and you can adjust the feet. I did this originally, but I was making this video and I was rushing and unfortunately I did not re-level the machine. Now I did get a print, but unfortunately the liquid was measured correctly, but it was all to one side and we lost one of his swords and he's got a big gash in his chest. I screwed the pooch. Tomorrow morning, I will start another print. And when I get home from work, I will finish this video. This is day two. I was hoping to have this video done in one shot. I reprinted Deadpool. Hopefully, this time it came out right because I leveled it out. Let's take a look. Safety first. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be doing the video the rest of the way this way. It's amazing the results you can get when and it's level. Got my gloves on. I don't screw this right up top here. And I bought a little dollar store tray with my tools on it. Take it off, put it down on that. Put that off to the side for now. What we're gonna do now is take the resin bottle, open it up, take your little uh, funnel. I think I got that at the dollar store too. Grab a filter. I found these at Harbor Freight, 100 for five bucks. 3D printed this little holder right here. Put it right up against here. I'm gonna take the resin out. And you can see this is the liquid in here. There's a little notch. That's where you wanna pour the liquid out. So we're gonna take that and pour it right into. And I let 
that sit there and empty out. I have gotten this liquid on my skin. Just wash it right away. It hasn't really done anything horrible to me yet. Now, a little tip, if you're gonna be doing multiple prints like you're doing a character like I did my Alice over there, once you skim this out, you don't have to clean the vat. You could actually just wipe off the corner where it poured out and set that back up. Level that out, set it back up, put more resin into it and keep going. The biggest thing is you wanna get the actual resin out, filter it through and then pour it back in. If there's pieces floating around in there, when it brings it down, it could possibly break the LCD screen and you don't wanna do that. Here we are with Deadpool. We have him on the build plate right here. He came out pretty good, I think. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pry tool that came with your printer and we're gonna be prying right at bottom plate here. Comes right off like so. Boom. Now we're gonna take this whole thing, it's kinda sticky and kinda nasty. I take a little Tupperware container filled with the alcohol. That's the alcohol I use, 99% proof. We're gonna open up this case right here, we'll slide this over. And we're gonna drop Deadpool right in there. Shut this, and I like to shake it. Get it all in the crevices for about a minute. Put that off to the side. The biggest thing with this printer is cleanup. It is a pain in the ass. Get yourself an all-purpose degreaser. Mean Green, they say works best. We're just gonna spray this down. Take a paper towel, clean that off. Stick that back on the printer for our next print. Let the vat drip over here. I take the degreaser again, and this has actually worked really good for me. A lot of people say that you shouldn't use paper towels on this. I wouldn't use the rough paper towels. I would use Viva paper towels. They have a really soft, almost microfiber feel to them. That's what I use on this print number 50 for me. So it's worked so far. I haven't really scratched up the screen. I just go in there and clean out all the excess resin that's in there. Go in there, scrub it down. And what I like to do after I'm done, put that right down there, get some more of your alcohol, pour a little drop in there and rub that around as well, all right? Get in there. And now what we're gonna do, let him drip out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and just, I just pull on them, but parts like that are very fragile. So what we'll do is we'll actually take the flush scissors that it came with and we'll do a little cut. All right, so from this point, he's pretty much done. The next point we have to do is either go outdoors and put him out in the sun, or you can actually put it into a makeshift UV case that I made. So this is the UV case that I made. You can build one of these. Basically, it's just a box with tin foil on the inside of it. And this is a nail salon UV for gel nails. You hold down on it, it does it for 30 seconds. If you hold down on it, it does it for until I turn it off. I'll leave a link for this down below. This was 10 bucks. I cut a little hole in the top here. And I like to do it from anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. We'll shut them in there. Use a bottle to hold the door shut because I'm so fancy. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. And now we'll just wait 20 minutes and then I'll flip them over on the bottom. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes. I flipped it twice and Deadpool should be done. So I think that came out really good and I could spray paint him and get him painted if I wanted to or I could just leave him like that. He looks pretty cool like that. So my final thoughts and reviews on this. Obviously, I think it's awesome. I spend a lot of time with it and I highly recommend if you're looking to get into 3D printing, this is the way to go. The only thing is the mess is kind of rough. You're not gonna spend a fortune on resin, especially if you hollow out your models. I think the resin bottles cost you about $20 a pop if you get them on sale. That's not where your expense comes in. Your expense comes in paper towels, gloves, cleaners, alcohol. It's all the extra stuff to clean it and get everything going that's going to cost you. My overall rating, guys, it's a five out of five. I love the thing. I am so glad I have the thing. I am totally geeking out with it and highly recommend getting the Elegu Mars. So definitely take a look at that. I almost want to get another one so that way I can have them running at the same time because I print multiple pieces. It's a little crazy for me. It's bad enough that I rearranged my whole office. So if you have any questions, please leave comments down below. Make sure you hit that like or subscribe button if this helped you in any way. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! Because he's still not safe to touch right now. With the alcohol and the resin, it actually... I know what you're thinking, crazy Will's tech show's over, what do I do now? Real simple guys, you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button and then you check out my other videos. It's not over, I made a lot, it's been a good year.